Hey everybody, this is Neo once again from the Overtalker magazine. So today as per title, I'm bringing you the Aorus RGB memory. So this memory is rated at CL18 222242 at 1.4 volts with a DRAM frequency of DDR43733. Now, this memory, I can't actually tell you how much it costs because I tried to look for the local pricing on that and I couldn't find it. I looked on New Egg and I actually couldn't find that price either. However, the memory price that I did find is for the DDR4 3600SKU. And that one you can get for 2,595 at Progenix and all the way up to 2,900, I think, at Titan Ice. Now, the reason I tell you about the 3600SKU is because that SKU actually has better timings than these, the ones that are rated at 3733 like this one. But the thing is, I tried to run the same timings on this memory kit, the 37331, as the timings that you get on the 3600 kit. So that's CL, I think it's CL 18, 19, 1939 at 1.35 volts. And you know what? I actually couldn't do it. So I'm suspecting that's an that's a different IC. Probably a Micron E die or perhaps maybe even a Hynix C die. I'm really not sure. And this one is definitely Hynix D die. So that said, let's get to what makes this memory tick. The things that I like about it and the things that I don't like about it. So let me tell you the first thing that I don't like about this memory. RGB fusion sucks. From the motherboards, right across to the VGA cards and of course to the memory, just RGB fusion happens to be the worst or rather the weakest link in the entire gigabyte experience chain. You can get awesome hardware. You can get fantastic presentation. They can tick all the boxes all the way up until it gets to the software and that's where the whole thing just explodes. In fact, I used to think that the BIOS on Gigabyte products was, the least on motherboards, was the part that I didn't like the most and that's when RGB Fusion just decided to, well, pop the ante and be like, you know what, I can, yeah. Okay, so the PCB is A2 standard RGB PCB and we're looking at single rank memory of course and Hynix D-Die as I might have said to you earlier. Now when we're dealing with D-Die there are some expectations in terms of frequency, uh, high frequency at least, and timings. In my case I'm not sure if this is a motherboard limitation or if it's just my particular memory. The max I could actually post at was 4933. The max that I could actually boot into Windows at was 4800 at 1.6 volts. Obviously the timings were terrible because I left the motherboard at auto rules and that's what it gave me. Of course you can tune these down. However, if you are thinking as well that damn 1.6 is a lot of voltage, just keep in mind that there are DDR4 5000 kits that are rated at 1.6 volts using the exact same ICs as what you find on this memory. So 1.6 shouldn't scare you. The thing that you might want to watch out for is temperature because as this old memory or most memory rather, temperature is a thing. So you might want to keep these cool or at least get some airflow going over them. And this also brings me to the heat sinks here. So the heat sinks here are not anything spectacular. They're very solid though. Okay, this is a really solid piece of aluminum, I think. And obviously it's on both sides, even though the DRAM or rather the DRAM ICs are on one side of the PCB. But point is they work pretty well because the memory does get pretty warm, especially if you're doing mem tests repeatedly and just doing any sort of memory intensive benchmark or running any memory intensive program. So that brings us to performance. So what are you expecting? Of course, XMP, you're not gonna really blow anybody away with that sort of performance. I think in Geekbench 3, you're looking at around 7,690 or so. That's in the memory performance test or subtest rather for Geekbench 3. And if you tune the memory, you can probably bring that up to 8,500 or so, depending on all the tweaks that you can use in the BIOS. What I did instead, I chose to get to this sort of performance, uh, I think around 8,800, just using the memory OC. So talking about the memory OC, the memory OC I used to achieve this performance is actually for uh, DDR4, 4533, CL18, 24, 22, and 44, I think, or 46. Now, to achieve this, I only needed 50 millivolts more, so I ran 1.45 volts. Now, at the higher frequency, obviously, performance was better. Now, you'll notice as well that my write performance is actually half of what it should be, meaning that the Infinity Fabric clock actually went to half rate. Now, the reason that I left it like that instead of fixing it to one-to-one -to -one is because that's literally what happens if you load XMP. 
So what I'm comparing here is what you get truly at XMP and what you get when you are actually overclocking the memory going for highest frequency, lowest timings. Now, I would think that 3800 might do even better, but we've seen 3800 before and it's so close to what you get with XMP that I don't even think it's worth showing it to you, particularly because you will not be able to necessarily tighten the timings or do anything magical with the timings outside of what you would do at 3733 or any other frequency. With all that said, I genuinely did like the performance I got at 4533 and as you can see Geekbench definitely paid off there and even in the games I mean if you look at Far Cry New Dawn especially the benchmark I know that this particular game is CPU sensitive but it's the best one that I had on hand to use readily to illustrate the differences between XMP and Max OC. As you can see the average frame rate is better minimum frame rate is better even though max frame rate is relatively low or rather consistent with what you get at XMP. So there is some performance to be had if you are not GPU bound by overclocking this memory. Now for the going price, okay, which I don't know about, I'm assuming maybe 3,000, just over 3,100. I think it's a fair ask, but if it's gonna cost you like 3,400 or so forth, then I don't think it's worth it because there is another Aorus RGB memory kit, the 4400 SKU instead, that's actually retailing for 3,800 or around there. So if this 3733 was 34 or so, it would be too close to that. And I would just recommend getting that other SKU. Now, the last thing I'll say about this memory is that if you are using a gigabyte motherboard, you are able to get an extra 66 megahertz or rather actually it's actually 33 megahertz and 66 megaticks a second obviously i wasn't able to use that because i was using an astrock motherboard now once and for all if you are wondering what system i was using to test this i was using a 5800x with the astrock phantom gaming itx ax using the p 2.0 bios right that has akisa 1.200 on it having said that i think there are some limitations that have been imposed on this memory by this motherboard simply because with other memory i was able to reach exactly the same frequencies basically i'm hitting the same wall with different memory with different ic's where i shouldn't be so i'm thinking it's more motherboard than anything else suffice to say i think i've proved that this memory is actually quite capable if you're willing to overclock it once again, there's memory performance to be had, just synthetic performance. There's also gaming performance to be had as well, as you can see in Far Cry New Dawn. Overall, it's definitely not a bad kit of memory to be looking at. And I would still go for the 3600 kit instead, purely because I suspect that you actually have better ICs on that skew rather than this one. If you are able to get this on a decent motherboard, I think you can actually end up with DDR4 4600 with some really good timings and some excellent performance. So let me know what you think about this Aorus RGB memory. Is it to your liking? Is it something that you might consider? And for the going price, do you think it's fair? Remember to leave your comments below. Remember to share, like, subscribe. Until the next time, check out the benchmarks and I'll see you on the flip side. Peace.